Welcome to the Zoning Advisory Committee meeting of November 22nd, 2019. Um, I, uh, I don't know if we're going to have a quorum without John. Do we have a quorum? We have five. Hmm? We have five. We have five? So that's good. Okay. We're all, we're all set. So John may be joining us later. I don't think I ever mentioned to you guys Elise's um, potentially watching at home. She said she'd read minutes, but <laughs> she's on bed rest. <laughs> and um, so we probably won't see her until well after the baby is born. <laughs> okay. no, I thought the baby was born already. I was going to so, check with no, you. Yeah, again. no, I don't, I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, if, she, if you're watching Elise, hi. hi. <laughs> um, okay. So our first agenda item is to um, review wording and uh, vote on removing car wash use from the downtown business district. Just to review, this came up in combination with another change um, in last year's town meeting and um, it got voted down, but it was very clear from the comments that this part of it <laughs> would have been voted up, you know, if it had been separated. Um, so. Um, and I, I think that we, um, you know, we've certainly seen that um, downtown business district doesn't really have the room <laughs> for a car wash facility and the cars that might queue up in that area as well. So, uh, so that's, uh, uh, I, you know, any other comments, support? I, I think what I was told was yes. the history of it was once upon a time where the Sunoco was, they thought that a drive through car wash could go there, but then the business owner clearly, clearly decided they don't want that anymore. Yeah. Um, and I think I that actually, I was, I am happy to vote for this. I, I, but I'm not really terrified of the car wash downtown anyway, but I'm happy to vote for this. And if they did, if Sunoco did change, I wouldn't drive through there. I, that wouldn't scare me. But. I'm fine with this, and I'm happy with it. Would this would this include uh, an independent car wash as well as something that Sanoko may want may have had in mind? Okay, yes. Both. And and it's by by special permit. Okay. It's in two ten dash twenty point three. Um, the following uses shall be allowed in the downtown business district upon the granting of a special permit by the board of appeals. So this is car wash facilities is just one of the five things listed. Eighty-four. Yeah. So I, I have a general question. Yes. So from the previous discussions, I remember if to change a, a bylaw or remove something which was already permitted, mm -hmm. if so, if a business already has a permit to it, it may be an issue. But otherwise, you can alter things, right? So, do we know if somebody in downtown district already has a car wash permit, and like Sunoco or the gas station? Not that I'm aware of. Them? No. Okay. And John, I don't think you're. You've seen I evidence don't know of any, of that. any car washes or any yeah. proposed car washes. Or but anybody who does hold a permit would um, it would be grandfathered because oh, okay. zoning okay. changes are only going forward in time. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. We're voting on this in order to go to town meeting because it has to be voted in town meeting. Yes. Mm -hmm. So um, I will entertain a motion to recommend this change to strike car wash facilities from the special permit this downtown business district. Um, we, <coughs> what we vote on is recommending to, to take it to um, planning board. Planning board then discusses and votes on it and whether it goes to town meeting. So, and then town meeting votes on it. <laughs> I make a motion. I'll second. Okay, thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, abstentions? Okay. I know, <laughs> but the other chairs, you know, I, th I think some of them would, would uh, abuse a gavel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so was, I'm sorry, was that unanimous? Yes. yes. Okay, wireless communications bylaw. This uh, is the memo that was sent out as well as it's on, in paper copy in front of you. Um, memo sent out by John, um, essentially, there were some changes to state law, I think? Federal law. Federal law. That, um, that we wanted to change our bylaws to be in compliance with that. And has everyone had a chance to review 
the changes that John is proposing? Yes. Anyone have any questions about them? So, just one question. Mm -hmm. uh, for L, we instead of facilities, we are making it new facilities. That means, is that because anything which is not new gets covered by the changes in A? Um, I'm trying, to remember, I'm trying to remember how this is worded in the federal rules. <clears throat> so I think you can you can regulate height of new facilities. You cannot regulate height of existing facilities if I think that's it. If, if it's <laughs> existing, you can't regulate the height Only new unless it's like substantial. Unless so let me, me reword this. So existing facilities. They can expand them. They can't expand them, and the language that they put in the federal law is um, that does not substantially change the physical dimensions or tower or base station. So you can expand it, right, for an existing facility, but they're already there, so you can't regulate the height necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, so if the if the height of the existing facility already exceeds what the what a new facility would be um, allowed to do, then. You can't really do anything. New facilities, the town can regulate that because that's not provided for in the federal regulations. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, and I, I think I know the answer to this, but I'm just going to, for clarity. So if a facility is um, desiring to expand and they come before whatever, you know, permits are necessary from the town, um, say the tower height does exceed that which is in our regulations for new towers. Um, and um, what, what you're saying is that um, as a part of the changes, we can't also then go back and say, yeah, but now you have to comply with the new towers, the height restriction. So, so we're saying that, that it's only, you know, we only, we, only, we, we cannot in any way make them comply with. Yeah, it's, it's confusing. Yeah. Um, so um, you can't, the town cannot deny modification of existing facilities. Right. So if the facility they're not they're not going to change it substantially right so it already exceeds the height that's that would be allowed <clears throat> and they want to put it 10 feet higher and it, this is more for like tell an antennas on telephone poles and those kind of communication facilities not necessarily um i guess it does include like meteor meteorological towers as well but the thing that i think we're really focused on is the communications facilities on like telephone poles and, and cell towers and that kind of, that type of thing so if something if an existing facility wants to increase it 10 feet because they want to add antennas onto it that might not be something that we can deny but if they want to build a new tower that is substantially higher then the town has the authority to regulate that okay and follow-up question is whether or not in the wording here it talks about the new tower height Yes, so that's That's what, D, is that it? <clears throat> okay, got it. Yeah. Anyone else? Um, so, if, uh, sorry. Uh, so if there is, so you said this includes cell towers, but cell towers are, are not on a telephone pole today. It, it, it could be on a building, pre-existing building, correct? Yes. And so A clearly says, you can change the dimensions, physical dimensions, or the height, in this case, of something like a cell tower. Is there anything that would allow us to regulate? Um, I'd have to look at the definition of how these facilities are defined in the zoning. Um, okay. I can look that up now. Sure, just, no, that's fine. Yeah. Um, I was just curious if there are other regulations that, from a safety perspective, would have to be taken into account if it's a pre-existing tower on a building, and does A in any shape or form conflict with those guidelines? So, 
So K and L deal with also deal with the height of antennas and facilities, new facilities. Height of new antennas not exceeding the tree line on the lot upon which the building or yard is located. So, if sorry, I, go ahead. If I may interrupt. Um, okay. The uh, wireless con communication facility is defined as a structure with antenna, if any, designed to facilitate the following types of services cellular telephone service, personal communication service, and enhanced specialized mobile radio service. Type of structures facilitating these types of services. <coughs> but are not limited to a tower, water storage tank, building, and utility poles. So, in yeah, I think in your example, and I don't know if this is going to answer your question, but if there's an antenna on a building, it's the antenna that's being regulated, not the height of the building. Correct, correct. Um, but is there any? Okay, no, I think that. So if there's right. a building, and I don't, I don't even know if there is a building that's right. I'm not sure exactly. But yeah. if there's a building that's 100 feet tall, and there's already a tower and a, a, a cell phone tower that extends 15 feet above that, there's nothing the town really can do to regulate okay. that. I mean, it's Got already it. existing. Got if it. somebody wanted to put a new tower on a building that's, that makes it 115 feet tall, then the town is the authority okay. to do something. Okay. If they wanted to expand that tower that's already 100, that's 115 feet above the ground, so 100 foot building, 15 foot tower, and they want to put another 10 feet on it, the town is really limited on what they can do. That That's interesting you say that because somebody could start off as a well under the rules and then right. build out something However, larger. There is a provision that it's that goes back to the language of that does not substantially change the physical dimensions of a tower or base station. Okay. So you can't build 15 feet and 15 feet and 15 feet and 15 feet because <laughs> okay. that would substantially change it. Okay. 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 Is there any um, time where the town could make uh, guidance for safety issues with this because it doesn't cover any anything what type of safety well like if the current tower is decaying of some sort okay and they're coming to um, you know put more of a ta more height on it or something and you know can't we say listen that's fine but you've got to fix the space because it's it's a good question. Um, I would imagine that would come under building code at some point because the structure itself would probably not be up to code and then they would have to follow building code. They may get grandfathered in to the existing structure so then they would just be able to replace in kind. That's a good question. I, I, I don't know the answer to that. It's not part of this material so I just didn't know if there, if there was another part that we should be looking at in conjunction with this. So I don't think that would be affected by the change at the federal level. Okay. Because it would be a determination by the um, zoning enforcement officer, or the director of municipal inspections, for the building code purposes, if that's an existing structure and how they replace it, if that then is considered still an existing structure. Okay. Would, uh, sorry, no, go ahead, please. <laughs> no, 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 go ahead. I was just going to ask uh, does 210101D, tower height shall not be more than 100 feet? Does that continue to provide us a safeguard for excessive height? I mean, it so looks that's like this is still new towers, essentially. That would be for the okay. Yeah. So if there's a tower that's 99 feet already, and they want to put two feet in the top, that wouldn't substantially change the dimensions okay. of the tower, so they would likely be able to do. Okay. 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 Uh, that's what I was curious about. I was reading your intro paragraph. This is your language. Uh, it's. Part my language, but a lot of um, the federal guidance that we received. My first comment is just a comment. I think it's funny that regulation of cell phone towers falls in a tax relief and job creation act. I, yeah. I like the way government works. <laughs> the way government um, works. <laughs> the real sticky thing is substantially change, right? One of your examples was if you had 10 feet. Well, if it's a 50 foot tower, that's that's a pretty substantial change. If it's 100 foot, 10 percent. I wonder how that gets litigated if that's. So um, I don't know the federal process, means. but the, if the uh, zoning enforcement officer, in Hopkinson's case, the director of municipal inspection, says, yes, that's a substantial difference, and the company who wants to do it says, we don't think so, they appeal it. Um, 
I would assume it goes to the ZBA mm -hmm. first, and then the ZBA would make a determination, and then if they don't like the determination of the ZBA, it would probably go to the federal level for telecommunications issues. Um, probably like the FCC, I would assume. Um, hmm. Or maybe they skip the ZBA entirely since it's a telecommunications issue. That's that's a good question. I don't know the process hmm. for if they disagree with that determination. But in terms of zoning, since it is a zoning determination, um, it would be the town's responsibility to make the determination what is substantially yeah. larger, and then they would basically appeal or accept that. Right. Okay. Um, I have one other comment, and this may be something that is either defined in our definitions or in the definitions that are within the federal law. And that's um, the reference on on 210-101-D, it says tower height. And K, it says height of new antennas. And then in other places it says the facilities, um, which may or may not include all of the above. <laughs> so to me, an antenna is a separate structure on top of a building. And a tower could be the antenna and the building together, or it could just be the building that's underneath the antenna. And that's that's what I'm confused about. So I think there is a distinction. I think the tower is a separate structure. Mm -hmm. So if you have, you've seen those towers that look like fake trees on highways, I, I would consider that a tower. Okay. Um, and then in K, it does say the height of new antennas located on residential buildings. Right. So that's uh, an antenna attached Clearly to Clearly that's... Building. But then on L, it says new facilities located on net, on on non-residential structures. New facilities located on non-residential structures. Right. So in the zoning, it says um, wireless communication <laughs> facility is what the term is, and so it says a structure with antenna, if any. So that is okay. the facility is kind of like a catch-all so facility it could be a structure is without antenna structure with or without and it could be a tower and like it, it's kind of the general term for these telecommunications things okay got it so got it all right thank you so i um i find all of the changes except one of them very clear cut and it makes sense from um, what you're trying to emphasize um, and um, clarify for the change in federal government, federal law. The first change by putting new in the first sentence of A does not make sense to me because it, it makes it sound like this entire bylaw refers only to <coughs> new wireless communication facilities, which is not true. It refers to both. But just the way it's worded, and, and I'm not saying that the first sentence is incorrect as changed. I'm saying it implies that the entire article is only referencing new. So um, that's where I would, I would change that to perhaps, um, no wireless communication facility shall be newly erected or installed except in, except in compliance with the provisions of this article. And you could, or you could say an and after installed and say, or and or um, existing, existing, you know, um, what is it? Changes to existing I mean, wireless uh, communication facilities, that sort of thing. Reading that now, I think you're correct. Um, I think we could just take out new. Okay. Yeah. Because going through it, the new was the one that you could regulate, whereas the existing you couldn't. But seeing that it's installed, I think that changes it. And you can install antennas on existing facilities. That's and it's true. still regulated by this bylaw. Yeah. Um, and I think the changes further in the bylaw that don't prohibit changes to existing facilities don't require the new at the beginning of this sentence. So I think we could just take that new out. Okay, I'm good with that. The simpler, the better. Uh, I, I would propose another minor change. Go ahead. 
Um, any proposed extension in the height does, that does not substantially change the physical dimensions of a tower or base station. Do we need to add the physical dimensions of an existing tower or base station? I mean, do we need to... Which one is this? Uh, this it's in A. It's in A, yeah. Uh, any proposed extension in the height that does not substantially change the physical dimensions of an, should we say, existing tower? I mean, it's implied. Do we need to explicitly say existing there? You can't change the dimensions of a tower that doesn't exist. Right. Fair point. Can you? Yeah. Yeah. Point. <laughs> Very good point. And because it's the extension. Okay. So that kind of implies an existing tower. Got it. Okay. Okay. So, so I think it's very clear that a special permit is required for a new one, and this is all in A. And the, um, the changes to a station that are not substantial, you know, I'm not gonna read the whole thing, um, does not require a special permit. So, I think that's very clear. What kind of permit does it require? Extensions, really almost nothing. I mean, do they have to just, I mean, they, they have, have to, to. They have to get, they have to go through FCC permitting. Okay. Stuff like that, but in terms of local permitting, um, they may have to submit a building permit. Yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking. I mean, so I building permit is review, basically the that, only thing. No, no permits, yeah. Okay. Anyone have any other? Questions, changes, comments? Uh, just a com comment. Now, if, because we are changing shall require a special permit to not, not require a special permit, uh, in 21000C, if applicable, all that stuff has to be filed by the special permit holder. But if there is no special permit holder, like on the first page, uh, last point, C, mm -hmm. if there is no need for a special permit, there is no special permit holder. Does that language get negated then? I'm sorry, where are we, where are we talking? The C. last point, C. On 210-100? Yes, 100, C. So first page. Um, yes, it implies that it's a special permit <laughs> only for the new facilities. Right, so the new fa any new facility will get... A special permit. Require, yeah, we'll need to get a special permit for this. And then there'll be required to do, as it says, as a special permit holder. Older facilities may have a special permit before the federal regulations came down and said you can't regulate these types of things. So those also might be special permit holders. Okay. Um, I don't know if there are any, I would assume there probably aren't many, if any, that aren't special permit holders because they would require one previously. And yeah. now that they don't require one, <laughs> Going new forward. ones still require one. So yes. it would be... Uh, there might be like a small window where no one required one, but I don't think that's actually the case. So yeah, would it be more appropriate to just say by the facility owner? Um, not necessarily because some of these uh, wireless communication, like antennas and cell towers and stuff, lease space on other okay. facilities. So there might be multiple owners on one. But piece. each one of them. Each one of them needs to submit it. Right, but I don't know it. who is responsible for going through this process of getting certified. If it's the owner, or if it's like they in agreement with the lease people. I, like I don't know what that is. Oh. So I don't know how all that works. Okay. To be honest, so I don't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't change it from what it already says until we know what the process is of how they handle all that information. And I don't even think that's a local issue mm -hmm. because the I mean the special permit is what the local body issues and regulates through not mm -hmm. ownership or leasing of the, of the facilities I don't know, I'm, I'm working around what I'm trying to say but I understand um, since can we can regulate the special permit I think that's probably the best way to identify these um, before it goes to the public forum at planning board I I think that um, we should send it to our legal counsel 
and just ask that question sure. on that particular point mm -hmm. um, because that'll save a step for planning board to ask the same question over again <laughs> and kick it out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So in the, um, in the interest of efficiency, I suggest we vote on this wording as is without the new in A, um, the first new, um, and with the contingency that um, you'll talk to legal counsel about this, the by the special permit holder phrase in C. Is everyone comfortable with that? Sure. Okay. Yep. okay. I'll entertain a motion to kick this to planning board. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. I'm sorry, who seconded? My two. No. Trying to take credit. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> no. Come eventually. <laughs> we'll let you do it next time. <laughs> the earliest meetings where I would say almost nothing because I was trying to learn the ropes, I would try to jump in to move or second just to get my name in the minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no way. I happen to be on planning board too. <laughs> Duly noted. That's a good lesson. <laughs> okay. I am going to move to our work plan, which you don't have in hard copy. Um, by the way, if you do choose to print out hard copies at home or anything like that, it's, it's legal sized. <laughs> no wonder. <laughs> and, and the last few pages are the old items. So don't print those pages. You probably don't need All them. Right. Okay. So you're skipping over solar overlay. No, I'm going to do solar overlay while I'm while I'm on here. Okay, I'm sorry, I just no problem. yeah. So the on. way I a solar overlay right now is let's see here. <clears throat> Number one, but it's on this uh, third page. Okay. I don't know if, if people have this in front of them. Mary, when was the last time you sent out the work? I sent that out with the agenda. For um, this meeting. Yeah, for this meeting. Would like me to go upstairs and print out some copies? Sure. Uh, sure. I, if I can find them, then I'd, I'd rather. Yeah. Okay, so Rhea, you have it? I have parts well, of it is. because I, I can't it. print legal. So so you might have some of it cut off or something yeah, like that? Yeah, okay. But you have this version? Yes. Okay. Do you have the most recent version? I printed it like this. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, yeah, John, if you could get uh, two, three copies. I don't need a copy. I've got two copies. Copy. Right? You don't have it. I'm just. Oh, but hold on. This, I, I, oh, you can, yeah, you can I have read it. that. Oh, I okay, have it from that. No, yes, we don't do. need copies. No, we don't. We don't need right. any copies. My we'll printer wouldn't no. behave to go down. I can. No, we don't need. We don't. Did you already print them? No. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so on the third page, Solar Farm Overlay District, item number one, there were a few things that came up in our public forum that I've added to this line, um, and you know I have the, have those shaded in purple, um, the new things. So some of it was um, consider screening for building mounted solar. I wasn't sure if it was commercial or residential. John, do you remember who this came from, or it's just something that you'd heard? Because it wasn't from somebody who spoke that night, but I remember it um, um, coming through you. Which one? Where are we? I'm Sorry, solar, third page, third page. top solar of the third screen. page, solar form. Yep, that was from uh, Barry Rosenblum. Okay. He had the question about the residential solar. Um, the, the concern he had was on, I don't remember the road, I want to say it was maybe Hayden Road. Where he thought that it was a residential use of solar that was kind of unregulated, but it turned out that it was the one he was referring to was actually a commercial use of solar that it is was permitted. But his question still remained as to what, how do you regulate residential uses of solar or accessory uses to residential for solar? Okay, and and was he concerned about 
people putting, you know, solar uh, solar panels on their roofs. More ground mounted. Okay. Um, I guess there's uh, a provision that allows for ground mounted residential accessory use of solar, and he was concerned about um, views for neighbors and, and that type of thing. Okay. If that were to be done. Okay. And <coughs> screening. Um, okay. Okay, so that's, that is the, um, the addition to this um, solar farm overlay. There was also, we were, the last time we talked about this, which was um, in October, um, based on, on Ted's research, we had talked about needing some legal advice in terms of what, um, what can even be changed. Right, because we were told that <coughs> Had to agree could, to it. Yeah, but we had to agree to it every. Week. And the question is, right. can we can we restrict areas? And you know, well, we did change some language, though. It had to be um, screened um, appropriately, not just. We, we did, and that went through. Right. Yeah. But the new question is, can we limit? commercial solar farms to certain districts or areas of town. And apparently and what Wellesley and Weston said Yes, apparently you found that they could do They just, seem to think they could. Yeah. <laughs> they, they said nobody challenged them. Mm -hmm. But But so then identifying those locations. Yeah. yeah. So identifying those areas where we would, you know, we could see commercial uh, solar farm on the land permitted is the, the key, right? So next to the highway, which is what one project is was right. before ZBA. Right, so I, my memory of our October meeting was, I shared it seems two towns have done it. We probably ought to ask town council, does that mean we have a green light or not? But, um, what I remember, I think, is before we start looking at maps and picking stuff, that you might run it by planning board and just get some feedback from them before we spend a lot of time trying to figure out what the five, six, seven, eight of us are in Because I think that could be a messy process. And if we went through that and then went to the planning board and they said, what is this? We're not doing this. Right, right. <laughs> that would it's be a, a frustrating. Big waste, <laughs> big waste of time, exactly. So. Uh, people think that I should do that with planning board prior to us asking legal counsel. Can we do both at once? We can. Just wondering, you know. I just think we should do those before we start looking at maps and proposing areas. I'm a Ted. I don't hear that often. <laughs> yeah, me with you. <laughs> okay. So I will take the action to talk to the planning board about uh, just their thoughts about whether or not this even makes sense to try to restrict it to certain zones. And that, you know, don't worry, we're going to check the legal ramifications first. But, um, but do they think that that's a good idea? And if so, do any of them have any specific ideas about where? Yeah, like some guidelines so. for us, maybe. Okay, get that. Is that, Mary, the kind of thing that can get on a planning board agenda really easily? Just a, yes. little, a little chatter thing, or is that something that might take a month or two before? A meeting? month or two. <laughs> probably a month. Yeah. I can probably get it on the next agenda of administrative items. Okay. So I'll ask for it that way. Okay? If, um, what day is this planning board meet? Uh, Monday. Monday. This, this coming Monday. Um, if it would help for me to be there to share whatever my notes were that I sent out to you, um, I can't promise, but I can certainly, um, once you have a date for that chat, okay. um, you can let me know and I'll do my best to see if I'm free. I will. Sounds good. The next meeting is December 16th. December 16th. I mean, this is not something that's gonna go on this town meeting regardless because so. because yeah. we it's going to take so they may kick this you know off their to-do list they're going to focus on what's going to be prepared for it is possible but 
Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll try. Because I really think we can get, you know, 10 minutes discussion. Right. I mean, all I'm looking for is a green light to say, go ahead. John's exactly. looking skeptical. And, and, and start f and figuring start out parcels. Out. Right, right. Yeah. Because, I mean, it is going to be a long process. Right. So we it's need guidance to start it. And that's when I'm going to try to sell it. <laughs> all right. So um, does anyone feel... Uh, you know, any comments about the the concern and the um, need for more screening for residential ground mounted? I, I think we need to limit these things somehow so that they're, they're not everywhere because I think it's it's going to affect more people negatively than positively. Even though I like to see clean energy, it's yeah. just one of those things where. If you're cutting down trees in order to put solar panels, it yeah. sort of makes them. It just doesn't make a lot of sense to do that. That's the thing, no, right? for sure. So, so it is not building mounted, <coughs> but it's more ground mounted that that is of concern. So I'm, I'm changing that in the notes because I misunderstood that. Mm -hmm. I personally think that building mounted, we, you know, for residential. No, I don't think that. <laughs> You know, neighbors should be able to say, no, those, you know, are unsightly. I'm like, sorry, <laughs> my house. <laughs> you know? If you've got a big um, industrial building and you've got, and that faces a neighborhood, it's almost got the same effect as if it was ground mounted. Right. Yeah. And that, that has, you know, should be taken into account, especially, you know, based on grade, because, you know, certain, I remember going, driving by a building that had uh, solar panels on the top of it. An industrial building, but it was it was way low, below the ground, so that it almost looked like the solar panels were at ground level because they were at the level of the road. So, <laughs> okay. Solar panels currently on commercial properties are they commercial? Is it a so special permit process? That yeah. So that's that's a that takes into consideration whether you're shielding it or not. I'm assuming, right? I should, I should clarify, it's not on commercial properties necessarily, it's a commercial use of solar. Right. So they could be located on any zone type of land. It doesn't have to be commercially zoned. Do you know if anyone is inquiring for rooftop mounted solar arrays for commercial use? Those are not usually regulated in zoning. So they can just talk to the landlord uh, and they, they wouldn't need have building to permits. But that's the part that I was talking about, is if, it, if they're doing, you know, a 40,000 square foot building is an acre. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's like you're, you're talking about an acre of potential solar panels on top of the building. It should be screened appropriately. I would think that this special permit process could do that if they would fall under that. That would not fall under the commercial use. Because the, the commercial use of, of solar is, I believe, limited to ground mounted. So it's not considered commercial use if it's just um, be benefiting the business that's in that building. The accessory to the, pr the principal use, which is that building. Right, but you could also use solar panels on an industrial building and sell that electricity to somebody else. It doesn't have to just go to that building. Correct, but in terms of... Hopkinton zoning, that's considered an accessory use to the principal use, which is the building. And that still is a, s a special permit process, or no? no? It's not. At the risk of asking a question that's already been asked, if Rhea owns a building and I want to lease the roof for my solar panels that I'm going to then sell the energy to, that's an accessory to her building still, yes. even though I'm a different. It's not person. the principal use of the lot. Okay. The principal use of the lot is her warehouse or. Right. And doesn't the same regulation uh, rules apply to uh, if I own a home and it's a one acre property and the home is only like a very small percentage of that. So can I put in ground based solar panels with no permitting? Um, that's a good question. I th there is a provision. See, solar is only regulated in the zoning for the commercial solar. Sure. So that would not be a commercial use. So it would be regulated 
through the building permit process, and I don't know if they put a limit on how large that array can be if it's an accessory to the residential use. I'd have to ask. Um, there is provisions for if it's a commercial use, but that's only if that's the principal use on the site. So in your in your example, that would not be the principal use on the site. So it would not require a special permit. It would require a building permit. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it would require a special permit. And so in in that same regard, so the screening itself is not something that is mandated today. Is it is it mandated for commercial use for uh, for residential? You get a special permit. It is. <coughs> So if you if you do a commercial use of solar, yes, the screening is essentially required. Correct, but if it's I've done it in a home, it's is it? No, it, and that's what that's what Barry's concern was. That's why he brought it up. Okay. Yeah, just for that reason. Okay. Well, sounds like we will be considering that. But I suggest that we do it in conjunction with any changes that we may make to the overlay kind of concepts. So we're dealing with all solar at once. All things solar in one, uh, one yeah. bucket. Okay. okay. Exactly. My only worry with that, Mary, is <laughs> I think it would be really hard for us to think that we could get by town meeting a solar overlay proposal if for it's all approved. Going for this year. No, for this year. No, I agree. But we could deal with better screening for this year. But if okay. we bundle it as one item, that means we're delaying something that we could maybe deal with this year. Okay. Do you okay. know what I mean? Well, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. I thought we voted and passed this screening. We did, but it didn't deal with resident, you know, accessory uses. It's not the residential part. I got residential. Got it. So yeah. residential solar isn't regulated in zoning. No, it isn't. So it would, how would you regulate the screening for something that's not regulated in zoning? Right. Right. Hmm. Someone give us a clear pathway, and then we can talk about it. Because <laughs> I'm all confused now. I mean, do other towns regulate the screening portion of the residential solar? Towns do it all different ways. Oh, okay. A, okay. Yeah. So there is a there is a precedence for towns having a the zone, um, screening rest restriction requirement. I don't know. I don't know of any okay. examples. I, I okay. would assume there are some, but I don't know. Okay. But towns regulate solar in different ways. Okay. Okay. So we're going to need to to determine a priority list of um, of the items on our work plan, including this one. And Ted, I'm taking your point as as you, it may be a separate issue from the overlay district. So. Um, the the deadlines for town meeting well town meeting is later this year so it's it's first week of may um so we need to get it to planning board so vote on it here you know any wording changes to any zoning bylaws we need to um they uh, planning board needs to review them which I think is going to happen in January, and have a public forum. Is that right, John? Uh, I believe so, yes. January, probably look, late January. Look, I would assume it would be later. I feel like long. in the past it was February. It felt like our exact deadline was... Oh, yeah, but the January. town meeting was earlier, too. So could it, the town meeting was earlier as well. Oh, so you're saying we have even more time. Yeah, we have... My memory was... The planning board discusses in February, maybe even leads in March. Yeah. And so our deadline that planning board slash we give ourselves was January. our proposals come in to the planning board by the end of January. Yeah, I think that that's reasonable. And in the meantime, you know, we I'll see whether or not that schedule, you know, we can even slip a week or two into February, you know, for, for to get any more done. All right. Yep. So um, when we're going through this, um, flag anything that, that you feel is, you know, t basically two different criteria. One, one is things that we can take care of quickly that are likely to be simple word changes that we can then vote on are not a controversial subject that requires a lot of research or that you think is going to take a lot of discussion here. That's one thing. And the second thing is, 
things that you think are, whether or not they're, you know, they're going to take some research and some work, um, things that you think are critically important to deal with sooner than later. Okay? So, through the chair, if I may jump in. Yes. I open up the schedule from Elaine. Town meeting warrant closes on February 3rd. <laughs> what? Is How that could that be? That's so so that's, that's for the warrant. So you would have the recommendations for zoning articles. The planning board conducts uh, public hearing on the zoning articles in February. in February. So it would be after the warrant closes. Right. But they can put them on the warrant and then take them off Correct. if they choose to do so. So, um, so we still, I think we can do at the end of, end of January. January. Um, but obviously we're not going to, we're not going to hold on to all of them and dump them over them at the end of January. <laughs> we're going to, you know, give them to them as we, as we get them done. Um, February 3rd. Wow. <laughs> it's 90 days before the meeting. Oh, okay. All right. Guess so. <laughs> okay okay so i'm just starting on page one right at the top so this one i'd flagged as um as again this is absolutely necessary if this the special <coughs> town meeting next week approves that downtown corridor project is going forward okay so with that assumption um, this is this is critical to have um, on the warrant if any zoning changes are to be made on a temporary basis. So the idea behind this is the business survival plan for construction um, downtown for the downtown business district um, when um, or during during the downtown quarter project. So it's a temporary relaxing of certain zoning restrictions on temporary signs, et cetera, et cetera anything else that we can think of or that other people suggest um and this is an easy one it should be an easy one let's go okay <laughs> the second one um allowing the zoning enforcement officer to determine whether pre-existing structure changes minor in nature and um eliminating these from the zoning board of appeals um, list of things so I also think this is an easy one, although you know we have to do a little bit of work to make sure we've got the right, um, all the right zoning bylaws referenced and so on. Um, so it's uh, so we get the appropriate wording in there. Airbnb, short-term rentals, um, and you know obviously we'll this this may be an entirely new bylaw. Um, could be related to hotels b and b's that we have currently um, but uh, but I think that this is going to take a great deal of discussion mm -hmm. and probably some more public input and probably can't make it to this year's town meeting right but this could be a focus for next year and Absolutely. start it right after we get through the planning board yeah, could be Downtown parking. <laughs> this is um, we we previously tabled this. We voted to table it. It is in our gray area down at the bottom. <laughs> um, but it was raised by our. Um, no, he's. It's okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's here to meet me. Oh, okay. Um. <laughs> um it was raised at our public forum. Um, so I want to you know, give it its due. I also want to make sure that we're not trying to do the same thing other departments or committees are trying to do. So um, I really don't understand whether or not this is a zoning issue or it's a select board issue or it's the town manager issue. It's is this something that we can address with zoning? This particular suggestion um, from the public last week 
referred to the rule of downtown business having, you know, needing to provide only half of the otherwise required off street parking <coughs> st um, spots and, and suggesting that it, they, it shouldn't be half because the parking spots are needed. Well, what, you know, that failed to include was the concept that the parking can't be provided because there's no room on the lots for a lot of the buildings um, for, for the downtown business district. So um, it, it basically, um, I don't think it would, I don't think it would be feasible. I think we'd be basically creating a rule that businesses couldn't possibly comply with. And, you know, what good is that going to do anybody, you know? Um, so Mary, you know, I, I, can I yeah, discuss ahead. with you? Um, making the requirement half was a random, you know, rule. I'd rather take that rule out and have it, you know, uh, new people individually come and talk about their uses and figure out the parking that way. Because the way it is right now, it doesn't make any sense. I mean, whoever came up with half of the, the parking rule for the, it, it's just, it's a random rule. Yeah. So, I mean, we, this should be addressed, um, and it should be addressed probably on an individual basis so when, when people do their applications. I don't know. Does anybody else have any input? No, I, I understand the need. I'm just, I, I don't know the timing of it, because right now with the, the downtown project coming up, if it passes in the special town meeting, seems like things will, may change. If there are more bike lanes, what if more people bike and we may not need that much parking spaces. So I, I don't know how things are going to turn around. So I can't see a clear picture of what is needed. So I, I don't mind discussing about it, but I don't have a clear path. Do we know what the timetable on the new lots is? The ones that we voted on and approved? I mean, they're green lighted to be built. John? Okay. We have not gotten, <clears throat> so at town meeting, um, 2535 was supposed to be submitted to the planning board shortly thereafter. We have not heard anything about it, so I don't know the status of that one. The Mark went out property, um, I believe they're either moved out or moving out, so maybe that one will be the first one that gets acted upon, but I don't know the status of that. That would be town manager but we're so, no closer right now than we were at town meeting i don't know we may be there may be stuff going on that i'm not aware of but in terms of the planning board i have not gotten or heard of an application for 2535 don't i would assume there's probably some site plan that would be needed for uh -huh. the market on property and i haven't heard anything about that but that may be the last step before everything else is done so i don't i don't i haven't heard anything on either one of them so we may be the same place or maybe a little bit closer. Behind John, could you ask for the next meeting what, what, if anyone's heard any changes on that? And then we'll maybe, maybe talk about this the next meeting, Mary, because then we'll have a little bit more information. So I also have a quick question. So if we are thinking about uh, giving a little bit of leeway for parking restrictions during the construction which will at least be a year or two right yeah that's a totally different thing this yeah. is this is yeah go no, ahead but uh, can this be imposed at the same time that we have given them a break so we have to anyways wait for a year yes yeah, so we're gonna wait till after this after that so. yeah I mean that's the only thing that makes any sense otherwise right yeah so mm -hmm. so one thing if I may jump in um, Uses are allowed to have their parking waived by special permit from the planning board. So that may be. That's the way that I'm talking about. Solution. Yeah. And that's, so that's, that's, already exist, there. that's already there. That's existing in the zone. So in, in, you're saying the number of parking spaces required for a, a business. Restaurant. Yeah. So in the shared and offsite parking section, so <coughs> this is. 210-124-C-1 uh, says the parking required by the uses located on a lot shall be provided on that lot unless a special permit has been issued by the planning board. Planning board may issue a special permit to, and there's three options, reduce the required number of parking spaces when there will be mixed uses on a lot by activities having clearly different peak demand times. Locate some required parking spaces on a separate lot under an agreement between property owners and locate some required parking spaces on a separate lot shared parking, separate shared parking lot 
an agreement between the property owners when the parking lot is shared by mixed use is having clearly a different peak demand at times. They can't outright reduce them, but there are options to locate them elsewhere and, okay. reduce, and reduce them. We adjusted the special permit through the planning board. That's the current process. So even if we if we were to to suggest a change to the rules, um, they could still go before planning board to get these things adjusted. Um, so. And through site plan, parking spaces can be. Reduced. But you know, but again, truly, it doesn't change the parking situation downtown. It does, you know, it, it, it just, you know, but it moves around the responsibility. This half, you know, half of the requirement, which has no relationship to whatever the use is. It's, you, you, know, you know what I'm saying? It's like, that's what the, that's what the complaint is. Yeah. And that's now, what's caused the problem. I've also heard, and I can't remember where it was here, but but thinking about it more rationally based on uses rather than um, basically ex expanding the, the, the rule on parking to, to talk more about the uses and to, to subdivide it better. Um, again, you know, formulas, formulas don't always work. <laughs> right, but, well, but we finally have a parking requirement rule that has something to do with restaurants that Ted, you and I worked on. I remember that. That was and fun. And it's a normal requirement, and it passed. And that is why we have it, because it, the whole Dunkin' Donuts thing and, and everything that happened before. Um, so there, there are some good guidelines per use. Yes, there are, yeah. Now, but if you take that number and you slice it in half, it no longer has any relationship to anything. And the only reason why this was, was put in place is because they think that like folks at the chamber and other people said, well, we want to encourage businesses downtown, but yes, we, we want to encourage businesses downtown, but we don't want to create a problem downtown, which is what's happened. So hopefully within the time frame of when the uh, Main Street Quarter project is finished and the parking lots that we're looking for will be online. One would hope. Okay. Um, so John is going to ask around the building about the status of the parking lots. <laughs> ask and then duck so <laughs> nobody throws something at you. Um, <laughs> okay. And then um, we'll at least get an update next week. May not solve the whole issue. <laughs> Okay, next item, uh, next, these are the new items. Allow more flexibility for house conversions to or new construction of three to four unit apartments, um, re-examine accessory dwelling units, etc. This, in my opinion, is a longer term discussion. It's going to take a little bit more. I also think... Generally, I'm not in favor of it, and I think it would be a hard sell at town meeting because it sure sounds like flooding more and more people into the town, and that's a major concern. Um, I, I like the way Tom Terry put it, try to find a way to have more affordable housing, and I think that is a problem, and I, I wish there was a way to fix it. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't know that this, to me, is the fix that I like, and I think town meeting would probably be very afraid of some of these proposals. Mm -hmm. I think affordable housing is the had, we should be hanging this on because I, I, I haven't heard much about, like more ideas about affordable housing. Eh? And we've discussed it in this forum that this could be a gateway solution yeah. to affordable housing. And that is one reason why I've been in favor of this. So, um, <coughs> so definitely if that requires more research, that's fine. But I think this has what to I'm be about kept. to say is not a proposal. I'm not proposing this. I would prefer to see something that says you're not allowed to knock down the small houses downtown and build bigger ones that people can't afford. That would be a proposal I'd like. That maintains smaller houses for first time families or older folks. The problem is the developers, the bigger the house, the more money they make. And so 
I think we run into that. It's not doesn't make them a lot of money to build affordable houses for people. I, I know from ConCon we see problems where we're developments are infringing on wetlands and the answer we get all the time is well we're not going to make as much money if we don't make it that big <laughs> um, so i agree and i, and I want to find a solution i'm not a fan there's a word i can't find right now um, philosophically of this being the solution um, but i'd love to find solutions so that our older folks can stay so that i moved in as a, as a first-time family and i don't think if you took me from 20 years ago, I could not afford to move to Hopkinton now. And I would love for people like me 20 years ago to still have a chance to move in. This is not a way that I like for a solution. And more importantly, I think it'd be a hard sell at town meeting. I'm actually thinking about reframing this one with affordability as the summary item with you know more of the specifics Kind of in the comments and i think mr terry was very open about you know he he, he was suggesting a few possibilities mm -hmm. but he said you guys do the research you know so i think he was very open about um good ideas new ideas but well, you we could we could attack this um in-law apartment part probably the easiest mm -hmm. and that allows for um you know, the ability to have a family member or non-family member. I mean, it, it, right now we have to have a family member, right, John? Yes, that's right. It's, it's worded. Yeah. And so maybe maybe that's the easier one to, to take on. You know, it, there will be people who say, no, I don't want that in my backyard. Yeah. And when it was discussed, the, the zoning advisory committee a couple of years ago when we had a really big group there was a lot of that there was a lot of people saying that it's like no we need to restrict that so there was also discussion i think as part of this suggestion from mr terry about 40r zoning mm -hmm. can you brief us on sure um, so 40r zoning in that. I think he gave me more credit than I deserved on this because I still, still don't know that much about it. Um, he was singing yard, praises of you, as yes, I can remember. 40-hour um, zoning is uh, known as smart growth zoning, and it allows for several different things. And Mr. Katino actually probably knew more than I did about this. Um, but one of them is a starter home provision, which, Ted, I think is what you're kind of talking about, where you allow for smaller lots, smaller size houses. Um, and by doing that, you get certain provisions uh, from the state and through the zoning itself. Um, it's kind of, I don't want to say it's related to 40B because it's not, but it's in that same type of realm of trying to increase housing so that it's um, normally affordable, lowercase a affordable rather than capital A affordable. Um, and then Mr. Gatino was also mentioning how there, he believes there's a provision for if school children are generated, the state pays a certain amount so that it, off, it offsets those costs. Which 40S, right? Uh, was it 40S? Yeah, it may be. It yeah. may be part of that whole package. Um, again, not super familiar with 40R. I just kind of know it in general. Um, so that might be something that Zach would want to look into of what what that actually does include, what it would take to implement, and how it would affect Hopkinton if it was implemented. Okay. I've got it like I said, I think that the accessory <laughs> dwelling is the easiest part of this. <laughs> when you say that, you mean removing the provisions? It can be a non-family member. Basically, all also. you do is you just change one word, okay, it, it, and all of a sudden it opens it up to having an accessory uh, dwelling unit that's not a family member. Got it. Okay. Okay. That's I get what it. I'm, I get that's it. what I'm suggesting to get to that point because I do see how that would be helpful in a lot of different areas. And John, I live in a starter home neighborhood <laughs> around Lake Maspinock. And you know, the problem is is that you have to incentivize a builder to actually do redevelopment. And if there's not enough money for people to do the work, nothing gets done. And so we, we have a neighborhood where the people on the water 
have made the investment and the people on the other side of the street rarely can make an investment. So it becomes really, you know, a mixed neighborhood. So, I mean, I think downtown here we have lots of little houses too. I don't think it's as bleak as, as a lot of people say it is. No, but what I have seen downtown is a lot of little houses getting knocked down and turned into bigger houses. Mm -hmm. The ABC streets? Mm, no, no. Uh, Up Grove Street, Pike Street. Yeah. That okay. I would agree with uh, But there is, a, um, I, I don't know very much about it, there is a proposal for an old house on one of the ABC streets to be leveled and something new put up. But I don't know the size of the footprint or the right. plan for the new house there. I mean, it's, the construction costs are so high right now that in order to get, again, someone incentivized to do something, it's like you, you have to look at the entire thing. But the ABC streets, the, the lots are very small, mm -hmm. just like the Lake Maspinac lots. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that, that requires a lot more debate, I think. I agree. Because it, it's, it, I mean, it's just your frame of reference, I think. Yeah. Okay. Next item. So what are we doing with this one? It is. It's going to be a longer term item. I mean, it's not. Not even just to try to, to attack the the. Uh, I think that's that's controversial and requires some discussion about whether or not we make that change. I mean, we can certainly we can certainly try to fit it in. Um, in the next month or so. At the risk of destroying the goodwill of you earlier, um, this would be the third time in four years, I think, that we take up accessory dwelling. And it's been, got a big no at town meeting last time. Now, if we, <clears throat> the other changes, if my memory is, was, was allowing bigger units and other things. If the only change was family. Yeah. It might be more acceptable, but then a lot of people might say, "What's Could the you point? Ask the no family's going to move into a place that's meant for an in-law." You know, so it might not solve the problem, even if it might be more acceptable. Right. Town meeting. Right. Uh, that's all I'm saying is it, it, it moves it. And Mr. Terry's been here, I think, every year asking for the same thing. <laughs> so it's kind of like, you know, I, I feel like we're we're not addressing you know, one of our town father's concerns. And, you know, if I was Mr. Pateri, maybe I wouldn't be all that concerned about this, but he, he's shown real concern about it. And to take probably the easiest way of handling this and and see how it flies. I mean, can you pull the planning board and see? Yeah, no, that doesn't make sense to, to, to do that. You know, I, I think that we need to pull ourselves and have a okay. discussion about it because I don't I don't think it's just a, a quick and easy discussion but I, I put it on here for you know a January meeting and that's that's you know just for that point and we'll discuss it okay okay see okay this has to do examine zoning rules regarding street acceptance in relation to Legacy Farms North Road and this um, has to do with whether or not um, after town meeting next week, there's still a need to um, examine any zoning pieces of the puzzle in order to make it, you know, make it uh, a possible acceptance in April. I mean, May. <laughs> oh, this is the so bus stop the issue. Bus stop issue. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What are the zoning so issues now? How is it? We we don't know that it should be a, a zoning change. But that's one of the possibilities, and if John were here, he'd be able to explain it okay. in more detail. Um, he's been involved in a lot of the nitty-gritty on this. So, depending on what happens next week, this may be something that we need to get on a warrant for town meeting in May. Okay. It depends what happens, okay? okay. So, um, John, this one was yours, form-based zoning. Um, I think that this is a longer term. Item, and you're probably going to have to do a seminar or something <laughs> <laughs> to teach us about this. Okay. Okay. Trash pickup for condominiums. Oh, Rhea, I wish you were here last week. <laughs> so, um, 
Yeah, but I don't have condominiums. I'm just talking about people just taking trash. <laughs> it's like, you know. <laughs> yes, but still. I just think of you as the. Okay. <laughs> okay, this. Um, Mr. Garabedian came back. He Last came back. Day. He came back and he's, um, and he has, uh, he's garnered a lot of um, um, additional people. Who are from Davenport Village? No, from other condominiums wow. as well. <laughs> so, um, <coughs> my understanding this is this is from his his memo summarizing this. I put in that um, these some changes were passed to the zoning bylaws in May 2016 at town meeting, and he's requesting a reversal of those changes. So, we need some research on what was changed and um, what has been um, put into the, um, I don't know if it would be the special permits or whatever the, um, whatever the agreements were with planning board and the developers of these various places. Um, so um, if I you? can do any of that research based on old minutes of the planning board or anything like that, if you can point me in the right direction, like the right folders to look at on Google Drive, <sighs> and then I can do that. Um, no, I, I after your your suggestion last mm -hmm. time, somebody was suggesting could you go check out the hash cam. I have found the video. I've started listening to the. The it's one hour down. Oh, right. uh, so from the discussion so far, I, I haven't finished the whole Article 33. It seems it was more about incineration of trash was removed from the language. It didn't seem like this language was introduced at that meeting. It seems like it was just the language was suggested to say that you cannot burn your trash. Okay. So, but I can I haven't finished it yet. But I can send the YouTube link and from <laughs> what point does the discussion start? So okay. if uh, people want to take a look at it, so that would be great. So you're saying the changes you see so far? So far, it didn't say we used to pick up their trash. Now yeah, we no, it was just about you cannot burn trash anymore. Right. Apparently, that was allowed in 1795 or something like that. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so yeah. um, I talked to Elaine after this actually, and she she brought up a good point of there are many condo units now. I think Legacy Farms is mostly condos at this point, um, so this would impact that as well. And picking up trash for condominium units would get potentially prohibitively expensive for the town. Um, and the town is not required to provide trash pickup services. So if this were to pass and the cost would get too high, the town could potentially just not pick up anyone's trash and we all have to be all no. no, I agree with it. I think it is a tra expensive thing. That's why I was like, uh, there must have been a reason for why this was not supposed to be. And because of the language that said it was introduced in 2016. So I was like, how was something introduced in 2016 without basis? So I, that's why I was trying to find more information about it. I mean, from that discussion, so apparently legacy is governed by Osmond bylaws and this garden is a different one. So they are different bylaws is what they were trying to justify it as in the town meeting. I was, I can, yeah. So I'm, I'm too new to this part of it, but it, <laughs> just out of a sense of fairness, it does seem unfair that if everybody's paying the same proportion in terms of town taxes, they are like in all fairness entitled to the town services and you know for them right. trash pickup should be one of them uh, the beyond that i don't have an opinion but it does seem the right thing to do the fair thing to do but i, I can't answer that okay um, because i don't know what like mayor was saying i don't know what kind of agreements were made with the special permits or the approvals so maybe there is some kind of piece of those approvals that give them a break or they got something in return for not getting trash collection okay. I, I don't know um and I haven't thought about it enough to really kind of sure, know, logically enough. go yeah. through that argument. Yeah. Um, but it's it's a, a, a relevant point. So uh, this this letter that he wrote is, is all about that whole fairness question. He's not he's, he's not questioning the law. He's just saying that why not? It's almost the no representation without like no taxes without rep the same kind of an argument. I pay taxes, you pay taxes. Your trash gets picked, mine doesn't get picked. Why? So it's almost at that level, rather than challenging the the law itself yeah. so so yeah I, I don't I don't have disagree with the concept but but I do know that at least you know a few um, things before the planning board in the last two years we have had had um, discussions about trash pickup 
and whether or not you know the road is set up for the big trucks and that ah. sort of thing so you know so um, and developers have negotiated the, oh no no we'll we'll make that part of the condo association and and so if that is the case, and if the planning board did indeed make an agreement with the developer to not m require them to do certain things because they were going to include that in the condo association um, agreement, then then we shouldn't be changing it. But I don't know the situation. I, I, I think just I don't remember know. from last year that there was something about these roads don't have to be public roads. And maybe that's part of the reason. The same issue we're having with the school bus on Legacy Farms yeah. North. But we we looked at this. I'm not saying we shouldn't look at it again. Yeah. We looked at it last year and dismissed it pretty quickly. Okay. There was there was a really good reason to say, oh, that's why it is. Okay. And but we should look at it again. I'm not saying to throw it away. Um, <clears throat> I'd also say if you buy a place there, you know ahead of time you don't get trash pickup. If you don't like that, don't buy a place there. Go somewhere <laughs> else. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, um, yeah, that's don't exactly buy right. into an agreement say and then say hey it's not fair um, that's exactly right of course very few people use that as the primary consideration for buying property but your, your point right, is valid but it's still yeah, yeah but it's yeah, still yeah. if it was in the agreement and I'm not even sure that that is the case that right it was, and I don't it was know clearly we, laid I'm out I'm trying there. to remember so, what we talked about a year ago don't know yeah and I don't know if the notes on here explain yeah, no, uh, it sufficiently. From last year's, it says, issue needs broad community discussion, needs research about safety, vehicles, trash vehicles, insurance, etc. Pro probably not a ZAC item. That's why we pushed it. Mm -hmm. Mm. So, because Mr. Garavidian brought it back, um, let's do a little bit more research on this. And good luck. Because you're going to have to go back to all the uh, yeah, decisions for every condominium in, we are. in Lapkington. Absolutely. And then any amendment to any of those decisions. Yep. I don't have to. We're going to test the filing system. <laughs> I would offer, I would make it a low priority. I, and I think I'm being consistent this year. I don't like taking up something we just made a decision on and then say, let's do it again the next year. Let's do it again the next year. And that'll pertain to an item coming up here in a couple spots. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't like this idea that I didn't get my way last year, so now I'm going to propose it again, and I'll propose it again, and I'll propose it again. At least it shouldn't be a high priority in my mind. Got it. Expiration of permits. Um, this is a suggestion from the planning board, uh, planning department, I'm sorry, um, that um, uh, some of our permits don't ever don't have any expiration date on them so creating some sort of term that is reasonable I think is a relatively easy one to discuss short you it, know, it would probably need to be five ten years but you know two five ten you know if uh, is there do you have um, John examples of the terms for say special permit or the other so special permits are regulated by the state so those aren't the permits that we are concerned okay, about but the other and this might not be a zac issue because stormwater is not a zoning issue and earth removal is not a, a zoning issue those are general bylaw issues yeah um but it's it's it was more of those were the examples that we found so it would be worth looking into other permits that may be zoning issues to see if that's also the case Variances and special permits are regulated at the state level. Okay. So I'm going to push this back on your department to research whether any of these are zoning issues. And if, if based on your workload, you can get the information ready in the next month um, and present it to us, then we can have this on the agenda. Okay. Mm -hmm. Car wash, add to industrial A by right. This, I believe, is one that we, <laughs> that got voted down at town meeting um, last year. Now, was it exactly that? Mm -hmm. This was the one that was tied to- Downtown business. Downtown. downtown. Mm -hmm. And it was proposed 
by right last year in Industrial A. I thought I heard, when I listened to the meeting, I thought I heard it proposed, add it to Industrial A There's and a special B. permit. Yeah. Oh, the other ones as a special permit? I, I thought it was a Downtown special. Business has it as a special permit right, no, right, right, right now. Yeah. But, but, but I, I thought, thought industrial A and B was... The proposal was added by right to industrial A and B and whatever that section is where Hiller's Pizza is. But that, that's not A or B. What is that one called? The like business district or something. But oh, yeah. Business? Oh, yeah. Anyway, I thought the proposal from the Chamber of Commerce was added to more than just industrial A. Nonetheless, my take is... It needed a two-thirds vote to win, and it came pretty close to a two-thirds vote to eliminate downtown and add it. My reading of the room is, if it was only added to industrial A, it would not have been anywhere near as close. That right. most of those votes were because people wanted to eliminate and they thought that was a trade they were willing to make. I continue to be against car washes, but again, being consistent, I'm also against taking up an item that we just dealt with that made it to town meeting and lost at town meeting. And if it's pulled out this way separately, I think it will lose even bigger at town meeting if it's reintroduced. So what we recommended last year was to allow by special permit right. in industrial A district, not by right. right. That's what we voted for. Then when it went to the planning board, they added the eliminating it in downtown business district. So it was proposed a special permit, not by right? It was proposed a special permit. With the warehouse or the, the storage by right? Maybe I'm getting those two confused. Yeah, well, yeah, the storage. <laughs> um, so, and then it failed. You know, the, the language failed. So this is requesting essentially the same thing, but even more, more so because more they're so. asking without for it the by right. Yes. And without the special permit, they're saying it by right. Oh, right, right. By right, <laughs> and they're not even, it's not now packaged as a trade-off with downtown. No, I, I when, when I saw that on the list, um, I had the same reaction that you did, is that we just had this voted down at special town meeting, I mean at annual town meeting, so. Um, so, do you suggest we table it? Um, yes, put it indefinitely. Down? indefinitely. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Parking requirement. Okay, this is was related to. Um, ah, that that's what that's what came up. You see, I, I was trying to remember this earlier. Somebody had suggested, oh, it was Chamber of Commerce suggested that review revise those parking requirements based on certain uses like warehousing and manufacturing, which really require fewer parking spaces because there's fewer workers on site. Again, I don't think it's a, it's an urgent issue um, because I don't, I, I've, I've never, encountered that we're getting lots of requests for warehouses where there isn't enough parking for them. I mean, and No, I think that this is part of the chamber's way of saying we, we're, we're going to try to go after, uh, you know, try to make it easier for businesses to come to town. But I, I go back to the basics. How does our website, our town website even, it's our, it's, even their page is out of date. I mean, it's kind of like... The Chamber's page. Yeah, yeah. So it's, I mean, this is just a, a pig in a poke. It's not really, it, it doesn't relate to anything. <laughs> right. In there's no of, demand for there's this. There's no demand for this. No this is just this. a, you know, a scheme by, you know, people who think this is going to create more business, and it doesn't. And it won't. And, we, and furthermore, it's a little harder to figure this out in a... Uh, like South Street, for example, where we're seeing the buildings are sort of like transitioning a little bit. They're becoming, becoming higher quality, where there was an industrial building and now you see offices in the industrial building. Right. So it's... Or vice versa. Or, yeah. Right. So <laughs> you, the requirement for office space is a lot different than it is for industrial. So this is exactly more problematic. But again, there doesn't seem to be either uh, you know, a shortage of parking in those particular places, South Street, 
Um, it's, yeah, it's not a really an issue. Okay, and then the next one, consider long-term development opportunities on South Street. It was a good discussion and kind of goes in, in the same vein as all the things that we were discussing on work, play, live, and uh, biotech, um, attracting biotech, and so on. This, this, doesn't, this isn't a specific zoning recommendation, you know, or anything like that. So um, I'll, I put it on the long-term list. So 80 South Street, which is walkable to the grocery store and it's walkable to other homes, is um, it is really well positioned to be a mixed-use site in the future. And that's where this live, work, and play piece comes in to play. Huh. Yeah. Um, and Which one is 80? 80 is the, where the town offices were uh, temporarily. Is that the one that almost shares a parking lot? With yes. <laughs> yeah, so while we want to encourage reuse of that site to be um, something that's healthy and mixed juice like perhaps. Mm -hmm. We should be talking to the neighborhood there about it. As well as understanding that mixed juice oftentimes has a residential component to it. Right. And so that right now where the town's freaked out with the amount of residences coming in this is probably not politically the right time to bring this up, but this could be a target for the future. That's just, you know, my thought on it. How far in the future? Don't know. Because mm -hmm. I don't know how long it's going to take to absorb what we've got. Yep. But if anyone wants to, you know, start that process of laying the groundwork for this to be a potential mixed use, and I'm sure that, you know, the first thing you'd have to do is talk to the Lake Maspinock people. Mm -hmm. We're very verbal about what's going on in their neighborhood. Okay. Got it. I took the notes, and yeah, I think this is a longer term discussion. Okay, um, there were a few other additions to items that are already on our list at the bottom of page four, number nine. Um, this was the um, the retail space in industrial A and B, which we were planning to cover this year. Um, so we just voted this in to get retail space, didn't we? No, this one didn't go to town meeting. Oh, it didn't. No. So, and this is something that um, either increasing to five thousand or increasing to ten thousand square feet. Um, maximum square foot of retail stores in industrial A and B. Um, so that's, um, again, was just newly introduced by Chamber. It was on their list. Um, but, <laughs> but it's on our list already, so. <laughs> okay. Again, I, I don't know that there are retail stores that are looking to go to South Street. There's plenty of other places to go put retail stores. I don't know that South Street's the, the place to put it. And once you put retail stores there, are you giving up your valuable land that you would have for, um, you know, biotech labs? Mm. This is <laughs> this is why it was protected in the first place. Yeah, I, again, I don't see it as the top priority for getting on, on town meeting this year. Um, probably if we can do anything with solar, maybe not based on the research, but, but we might be able to get some of that. Um, let's see, looking at... Possibly accessory family dwelling in it. Um, 
and along the same lines, um, allowing modifications of existing structures, but um, allowing more leeway for the zoning officers to determine whether or not that substantial changes are required. And we've got the car wash downtown business district removal and wireless communications, those two. And then those th seem like the things that we need to cover in the next <coughs> two meetings. In the next two meetings, yeah. Yeah, in the next two meetings to try to get it on this year's town meeting. Yeah? Okay. Um, one more thing that I, doesn't have to be for this town meeting, but um, Elaine, I, and Connor have been going through the zoning bylaw and just identifying housekeeping items because there's a lot of typos and oh yeah things. and so Connor and I had a, a meeting to sit down and just go through because I, I went through and found spacing and fonts and stuff like that <laughs> and he found out he's actually very limited on what he can change just in terms of updating the zoning to make it like you know, formatted properly. Really? He can't, he can't change it. So, so if it's voted at town meeting, he can't change it. If it's a typo or something like that that's voted at town meeting while he's town clerk, he, he can change it in limited situations. But if it was done prior oh to gosh. his tenure, he can't change it. Wow. So, wow. Every, so even if there's like a space that needs to be added between uh, numbered items to make it look consistent, that needs to get voted at town meeting. So it's wow. been identified, so a lot of them have been identified, yeah. getting it all written might be an issue, but if that's something Zach would want to take up, I can, I can try and fit it in my schedule to put something, a memo together identifying all those issues. If you can do it. And I'll have to talk to town council about how to do that because it's throughout the entire code. Yeah, exactly. So how do you put the warrant together for that? I, I mean, even like indentation of things, oh, you yeah. can't change. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. So, very uh, nitpicky. Thing. Constitutional oh. amendment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, um, minutes of November 7th. Has everyone had a chance to review those? Anybody could give me a motion to approve? I don't know how, what do, what I do I say? To approve oh, the, okay. I move to approve. Thank you. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Extensions? Okay. We approve the minutes. Okay. So just to review, um, over the next few meetings, several meetings, and before the end of January, we are going to... Um, try to bring all of these to a vote in Zach in order to send them to planning board. The business survival plan for the downtown business district. Um, allowing the zoning enforcement officer to um, have leeway on the pre-existing structure. We need to work on the wording of that, obviously. The we're hoping to get some more information about the downtown parking lots, but we um, may or may not be able to make any changes related to that. Any zoning changes that are required or may be indicated because of the Legacy Farms North Road, but that is dependent upon next week's meeting. John is going to see whether or not T and his department um, can research the expiration of permits and any permits that are zoning related. Um, and we can add expiration dating for those. We're going to look at solar possibly with the screening and 
related to roof mounting. Commercial. Commercial. Roof mount. Commercial. Sorry. Commercial use screening. Ground mounted, but um, whether or not there's any possibility and understanding the, the restrictions on on other um, uses of solar. So I can at least explain it to the, the town, um, what can be and what cannot be um, <coughs> regulated in that area. So. Uh, let's see here, I'm just paging down. I already talked about accessory. Wireless, um, and that's it. Yeah, because we already voted two things today. Yep. Okay, good. Schedule. We have a meeting scheduled on, when did you say, December 16th? No. No, it's planning. Oh, no, that's planning board. I'm sorry. <laughs> Obviously not on the 9th. Where do we have one scheduled? We, I, don't, I don't see it in my calendar. So I was like, do we, we don't have, have another one? Oh, no, one? we have one on December 5th. Are you kidding me? Another Thursday? Yeah. <laughs> um, but, but we don't have to keep it there. The problem is that... Can we put it on December 2nd instead? We do not have one scheduled for December 5th. <laughs> okay. It's not on the calendar. It's not on the calendar. No. Okay, good. Are we having one? Let's talk about it. It's too close it's to the town, town meeting, so maybe I don't oh, know. Oh, ninth, okay. Can we do it December 2nd? When is town meeting again? December 2nd would require you to post ninth, an right? agenda okay. next Tuesday, or does the holiday count as covering the days you need to post? No? So you'd have to post it. Yeah, probably Tuesday. Tuesday. So we could manage that. Tuesday, at the latest. For, um, for December 2nd. Second. Could everyone do the December 2nd? Yes. Monday. Uh -huh. uh, mon oh, Monday? Monday, okay. December 2nd. So Woodville Historic District has a meeting here. So where would it where okay. like to locate it? So we would need to do another room. Okay. Can you look into that? So you say December 2nd? Yes. It's supposed to be a Main Street corridor form at H Cam on the second at 7 p.m. At least on my schedule. As long as that doesn't interfere with anybody's Zach and me. We can my wife that. will be there, but not going to be there. <laughs> I'm, I'm fine with holding it. Sure. Zach, 7 p.m., December 2nd. We don't have any hot button issues that's going to draw a big crowd, right? <laughs> I don't think so. We're not going to pilfer people from other meetings. Okay, so December 9th is the special town meeting. December 16th is the planning board meeting. December 23rd, I don't think people want to meet. <laughs> Just <laughs> guessing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we do, sorry, we have the 19th, Thursday. Thursday the 19th. Can can people do the, the 19th? It'll be two weeks and three days after yeah. the, the second day. Mm -hmm. It's no good? No. Everyone else can make it? Yes. yes. Let's, let's put it in tentatively because I need to check with the people who aren't here. Ten to two. December 19th, you said? Right. Yep. Okay. And then into January. There is a January 6th meeting of the planning board. At least that's what I've got on my calendar. <laughs> so that would give us. What about the December 30th? The 13th? I'm sorry? What about December 30th? Monday, December 30th? I'm not around. No, Everyone's out. I think a lot of people are vacationing that weekend. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm around. 
So you and I could have a meeting. Yeah, yes. I'd like to be somewhere else, but I don't think I will be. <laughs> so we got three people. We I was for, three people. Every time we have breaks for school, I imagine where I could be going. Yeah. I end up and on the street. Then we don't. <laughs> <laughs> I can relate. So, okay, so December is there, 30th is not a possibility. It's not a possibility, you're saying? For, for it sounds like. Three people here. No, 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 I'm do. probably here. I have You're no problem. So, so, okay. I'm definitely out. You're definitely out. You're out. Yes. So it's, uh, I can ask, ask uh, Carol and John. Would you like me to schedule a meeting on the calendar? Don't put it yet. So December 19th is here. This room is available. This room, okay. Um, January 13th. Is there anything else on the town calendar? That's a plan for me. No, I thought the 6th was. Oh, geez, I okay. <coughs> then I don't have the right meetings for the planning board. Anymore. Planning board is 13th and 27th. So we can do so the 6th. So we can do the 6th. Mm -hmm. Good. Oh, Jan 6th? Yeah, January 6th. So I'll be moving to... Mondays in that case? <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, we're trying maybe, to move. Maybe bouncing back and forth. Okay, that's right. We're trying to move to Mondays like. permanently. <laughs> okay. Um, the reason we had to go to Thursdays was because the growth study committee yes. um, was on Mondays. Okay. And I can't remember who was on that as well. Um, well, Elise also couldn't make it. Elise Monday couldn't make it. Yeah, I believe. Yeah. But there was something else. Yeah. Anyhow, it was it was a conflict with growth study committee, and um, but Monday at seven p.m. is our normal time, alternating with the planning board, sure. if we can do it. Okay. Okay. So we're setting it up for. Should we then Mon propose the twentieth as well, and yep. say hopefully we put a button on it on the twentieth? Yes. <coughs> okay. Twentieth, Jan. Okay. And then if need be, maybe we could cram another one in. Oh, well, uh, 20th oh Martin, Martin Luther King. Luther King. Yeah. Uh, the 20th is MLK Day? Yeah, that means we can't hold it. Oh, it's a public holiday. No. Well, and so planning board has the 27th, right? Yes. So, so we can go back January to January 6th is booked for here. Okay. January 6th is booked, <laughs> okay. <laughs> we definitely need another meeting in January, so. We could go back to Thursday on the 23rd. Yeah, 23rd, yeah. Because <laughs> yep. we can't get away from Thursdays. <laughs> I will not be attending that meeting. That is my birthday. Happy birthday. Oh, Jan 23rd? 23rd. Oh, nice. Dude, I'll make you a cupcake. <laughs> Come on. I might be getting my wisdom teeth out the day before anyway, oh. so. Oh, happy birthday. Oh, God. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, so. Is there any any staff members that can cover for you, or are we on our check. own? I don't know. Okay. Okay. So January twenty third. And do you have this room for it? Uh, I should be able to. Okay. By the way, this is the part of the television broadcast that keeps people on the edge of their seats. This is what they were waiting for. They finished. Absolutely. <laughs> Just like, you know, the dead air when I'm typing notes. <laughs> so that is booked for the 23rd. Okay, good. Week. I think we can call it quits. Yeah, right? yeah well, we'll All right. Assess then. Shall we adjourn? I think so. Motion? Motion to adjourn. Thank you. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Abstentions? All right. Oh, <laughs> second. Because, uh, yeah, Thank you. Second is